Hello and welcome back to my continued looking at SSDs on PS5 expansions. That we're looking back at the Firecuda 530, and there is the reported sequential read from last time: 6,552 megabytes per second. And we're going to make our way into the test. That's right. The first game is Demon Souls. Demon Souls, one of the launch titles for PS5. I know I already talked about this in the other videos, but it's one of those games that I think loading on it is insane. And now the PS5 expansion slot has been activated it's going to be very interesting to see how well this game runs on the fire 530 <clears throat> so the first test we're going to be running here is directly loading from a save spot on the desktop there again it's a save spot we've already got created we're going to be offline and we're going to load them uh, on both systems we're running parallel ones here and we can see from the loading bash bash bosh honestly i don't think you could have told the difference there the, they were running at exactly the same pace. I don't think you could have possibly uh, picked one over the other in terms of speed there, which is more than enough as far as I'm concerned. Uh, next test, we're going to be, again, same area, but this time we're going to be loading from one of the arch stones to go to one of the areas, the smithing area. And again, running simultaneously from the option going into a load screen there into the new area, and we can see identical genuinely i don't think if i'd broke that down to frames which one would be faster between them um i have mentioned at the bottom of the screen but i will mention it again um these are running on different playstation 5 systems so to get the testing done a lot quicker but unfortunately one of the ps5s one with the internal ssd was running um the contrast setting slightly different and the capture caught it let's load from another arch stone as we go into another one here and again transitioning exactly the same time we'll make our way in and i think the seagate was the tiniest fraction quicker i am talking ten hundredth of a second there so i don't think we can give it a clear advantage uh, but for now i think that is the demon souls test we've only got two tests with or three tests there for demon souls and the next game coming up is ratchet and clank we're going through this game we've got two tests just like the other videos uh, this one is going to be booting the game from the beginning uh, in the first area of the game where you have control. And a later one is going to be that level transition warp that happens about 20-30 minutes into the game. Um, again, running them on the internal SSD and the Seagate Fire Cuda 530. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. So let's get things lined up for our test either side of the screen. So again, we've got them lined up. There's going to be a different contrast difference there on the PS5 SSD. But... We're going in and it was quicker again on the internal SSD. This isn't the first time I've seen this. I think all but one of the SSDs I tested on Ratchet and Clank, uh, the introduction part of the game going into the area was the tiniest fraction faster uh, on the internal SSD. I'm not sure why, um, but every time I did it, that is what occurred with the exception of one SSD that I'm not going to spoil. Uh, but everything else seemed to run absolutely identically fine. And I think perhaps this was a one-off, uh, which we'll compare against the rest of the testing. But for now, I think that's the part of this game at the beginning. You've got control, you've got lots of assets on screen there. But again, I think you want something a little bit more involved from Ratchet and Clank there. So I do think we should be maybe a little bit more there. Something to ramp it up for that transitional area that was originally, I believe, previewed when the PS5 was first talked about with some of the power underneath the bonnet there. So again, this is that transitional area running side by side from the same load game. And I think the tiniest advantage there was on the Seagate Fire Cuda. Again, this is a controllable segment. I've made sure to show that by trying to change as much stuff between each of the recordings, different directions, different animations, all that kind of stuff. Introduce little elements there in between where possible. But again, this transitional part is a very heavy read section there throughout the course of this transition. It is on rails, it has to be said, but there's still a lot of assets being created all the way through it so again i think even though the fire cooter there was the tiniest fraction ahead i think it was a tiny fraction indeed um, as we can see there it's slightly different from what you see there on either of the screens but it will cut into the final cut scene there and again from this point you have no control so we're going to wrap things up there on ratchet and clank we will be revisiting this subject in a later video don't worry uh, and from there we're going to make our way into our third game uh, a recent release this is resident evil 8 or resident evil village 
And from this game, we've got two segments. And again, I know I've covered this in the other uh, SSD check videos. It's going to get a bit repetitious. I'm sorry about that, guys. It's the only way to keep things fair. Um, we're going to be running from inside the castle, uh, escape the castle segment again. All of these are from load games. There's only a couple of instances uh, on this video where we will load the whole game directly from the desktop. Uh, and this is going to be from the castle, and the later one is going to be from the stronghold, and it's going to be a world-covering uh, trip. So, loading from the safe spot there, it is less than 3 seconds, about 2.2, but again, both loading spectacularly similarly quickly. Again, mentioned it, the contrast there on the left is because we've recorded this on two PlayStations to save a bit more time, and then it turned out that the PlayStation there running the SSD uh, test Unfortunately, that one had contrast settings much higher for the TV it was connected to. Consequently, they look slightly different. But here we go, going into load test two. This is for a later area of the game, running from a safe spot simultaneously. And again, I think it will be very hard to distinguish the difference there. So what we did in this segment is running all the way from the stronghold through the game back to the village um, to the area with the merchant and the, the the statue thing that you have to put down. That's right, I haven't played this game for a while. What of it? Um, and i got to say, it ran smooth as anything. And again, I, I appreciate this isn't anywhere near as um, graphically demanding as the likes of Demon's Souls and Ratchet and & Clank, but it's still a good example there. We are saving Spider-Man for another video uh, that will become a lot clearer in the later video when it becomes live. But for now... Again, running fine. I know the darkness is slightly difficult there within the game and the contrast of the captures there, but I think it does stand up as we make our way through the assets of the game there. And again, lots of stuff going on there in the background, all the way transitioning through. No cut screen, no cutting, no load times, nothing. This is just a smooth transition all the way through that village. And again, making sure that they're going to be slightly different there, so don't be surprised that one is going to get there faster than the other. But I think, again, this stands up for me. I think I would still trust the Firecuda 530 definitely to run this game for us here. And as we come out of this game, we can make our way into our next game, which is Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal, the PS5 updated version. I have covered this in a few other videos already in the first test series. And again, we're running from a single save spot relatively early in the game into an open-ended arena kind of environment with you know buildings knocked down there. It's a quick load. But it'll be interesting to see how they compare because most tests that I've done of this have shown that external SSDs have managed to load a pinch quicker than the internal SSD in most tests that I've performed there. We can see there, we're just getting it lined up and both of these are loading from the same save spot there and boom, near enough identical X clicks there. I think uh, the FICU to 530 was a pinch ahead on the button press, but I would say it was noticeably better, uh, maybe even a few tenths of a second quicker to load, even with the difference of button pushing there between them. So again, Doom Eternal, I know a lot of people would wonder why I would pick this. It is technically a PS4 title, but this is a PS5 upgrade title, and it's still very, very popular on uh, PlayStation platform, so I think a lot of people would like to see how this runs. Um, if you've watched my other videos, you know what the next game is going to be. It's going to be uh, the old school classic. Let's face it, it's actually old school now, which makes me a bit sad. It is GTA 5, a game that just will not die. Uh, GTA 5, of course, this isn't the PS5 upgrade version that hasn't arrived yet, but with so many people still playing GTA 4, even on PS5 of all things, um, I did think it was worth bench testing one of the longest loading games um, in the PlayStation 4 and indeed now PlayStation 5 era. We're loading this game directly from the PlayStation's XMB menu, that main menu when you turn the PlayStation on, and we're going to include the entirety of that loading on GTA. And anyone that's ever played it knows exactly what I'm talking about. One of the longest load times out there. Um, transitioning straight at the same time there, as you can see there on screen. I think there's the tiniest fraction of difference. Um, I have noticed sometimes when uh, using this game on external SSDs that the external SSD slowly over time garners an advantage. But again, it's so small that it's very much blink and you miss it. So we're going into it here. Again, loading on this game is pretty slow. There was a dude that upgraded the load time. He sort of contacted Rockstar. I think he even got a bounty for it uh, for updating the load abilities of this game 
but I'm not sure how much of that made its way onto consoles, to be perfectly honest, because the load time on GTA is still pretty painful. Particularly when we've been looking at games today that have loaded in three to five seconds. Here we are. We're nearly at 50 seconds now, and we're going to make our way into the game there. Let's see if there's any advantage, disadvantage, or are they going to run the same, which isn't a bad thing. I think the PS5 version got ahead by a fraction of a second there. I know there was a slight difference in button push, but I've got to say, I think the internal SSD won by, again, a fraction of a second there. But this has been my second barrage of testing here on the Seagate Fire Cuda 530. I know there's been a lot of these videos. I'm sorry to make so many of them, but it's just there's a lot to cover on this subject. And rather than one long hour, two hour video that is just going to be boring beyond measure, lots of these small ones released with more frequency, I think is a better option overall. If you have enjoyed this, click like. It helps me to know that. If you want to learn more, click subscribe and visit the links in the description to all of the products that I talk about in the videos, as well as links to other related content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.